AP5X, this is an example of using the principle of conservation of angular momentum to solve an example. So it's from chapter 1.4 in the Applied Physics booklet, and I'm going to do question 2. So the question says, a metal disc X on the end of an axle rotates freely at 240 RPM. So the first thing we're going to do is convert that to radians per second. So if you remember, 240 revolutions, there are 2 pi radians in each revolution, so you multiply by 2 pi, and that's still per minute. So we only do a 60th of that number in a second, so we have to divide by 60. That gives us 25.1 radians per second. Um, it also tells us that the moment of inertia of the disc and the axle is 0 0.044 kilograms meters squared. And the first thing it wants us to do is calculate the angular momentum of the disc and axle. So that's nice and easy. We've got the numbers we need. I and omega. So I 0 0.044 times 25.1 are in the right units. So multiply together. Give us 1.1 .1 newton meters seconds. So that's part A. Part B says, after a second disc Y that is initially stationary is engaged by X, both discs rotate at 160 revolutions per second. So I'm going to do the same again. Sorry, that second disc is Y. Um, multiply by 2 pi, divide by 60, that gives us 16.8 radians per second for the two discs combined. Um, and we're to calculate the moment of inertia of Y, the second disc. So, um, using conservation of angular momentum, the moment of inertia of disc X times its angular speed, initial angular speed, must be equal to moment of inertia of the same disc times its final speed plus the moment of inertia of the second disc times its final speed and since then then locked together the two final speeds are the same w2 oh, sorry omega 2 so if we rearrange that we get iy uh, we take ix omega 2 over the other side so that's the top line and then divide by omega 2 leaving IY, I, IY on its own as the subject of the equation. Put all the um, numbers in, so I'm actually dividing through by omega 2, so here I've got I omega 1, which we've already worked out in part A, it's 1.1, divide by omega 2, which was from this answer here, 16.8, minus and then we've got IX is 0.44 and the omega 2's cancel out and in the second term so if we work that out we get 0 0.022 kilogram meters squared that's the answer to part B and finally C says show that the total loss of kinetic energy is 4.6 joules so a loss is a negative value so minus 4.6 so the initial kinetic energy is half I omega squared, that's I of the initial disk X times the initial speed omega 1 squared, put the numbers in, and that comes to 13.9 joules. And then the final kinetic energy is the same formula, half I omega squared, but this time the total in moment of inertia is the sum of the moments of inertia of the two disks, Ix plus Iy. So we put all those numbers in. Uh, 0 0.044 plus 0 0.022 comes to 0 0.066 for the combined moment of inertia. And the final speed we worked out 16.8. So putting all that together, that comes to 9.3 joules. So the change in kinetic energy is the final EK minus the initial EK gives us minus 4.6 joules, which is what they asked us to prove.